All right, so welcome everyone and thanks so much for joining us today for uh, an open studio um, talk and visit with our current artist in residence, Navarana Iglo Liorti. Uh, my name is Jazz Keeler and I am the virtual programs coordinator with Griffin Art Projects. And I'd like to begin by acknowledging that Griffin Art Projects is situated on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Squamish and Stolo nations. And and we are very honored and grateful to undertake our work here. Um, so before we jump in and before I pass it over to Navarana, I just have a few very quick housekeeping notes. Um, so I first of all just wanted to mention that we are in webinar format today, which means that um, we cannot see or hear our audience members today, but we would like to invite you to get in touch with us and each other using the chat option at the bottom of your screen. And also at the end of today's presentation, we'll be having a Q&A session with Navarana. So do feel free at any time throughout the presentation, if a question pops into your head, go ahead and type it in the Q&A dialog box, which you'll notice at the bottom of your screen and to the left of the chat. There's actually a separate dialog box for Q&A. So feel free to type your questions in there. Um, at the end, there'll also be the opportunity to unmute yourself. So if that's your preference, you can just indicate in the Q&A dialog box that you'd like to be unmuted. And we'll go ahead and do that during the Q&A session. So it's a great pleasure to introduce our current artist in residence, Navarana Iglorliorti, um, who has been with us since January 16th in the studio at Griffin and is here for a few more days until March 16th. So thank you so much, Navarana, for joining us today and for giving us a peek into your studio and your practice and what you've been up to while at Griffin. So currently based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Navarana Igloliorti is a multidisciplinary artist and filmmaker working in short gauge film, video, painting, printmaking, and dance. Navarana often works in collaboration with community members or other artists, weaving together teachings, stories, movement, and sometimes humor through reflection of our connectedness with nature and each other. She completed a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design University in 2003 and a Bachelor of Education degree at Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador in 2005. And since 2004, Navarana has frequently traveled back to Labrador, where she grew up, to work for the Nunatsiavut government and the Shashashi Inu First Nation. Um, and Navarana's artwork and films have been exhibited and screened in galleries and film festivals across Canada. So thank you so much, Navarana, for joining us here today. And over to you. Hi, thank you. Is this good? OK. I can't see anyone, so just so you know that. Um, um, thank you so much for joining me today. It's really nice of you to, to do that on this. I don't know, here it's sunny. <laughs> so it's nice. Um, yeah, I was asked to do this uh, residency alongside of the Gary Neal Kennedy exhibition. Um, things got a little delayed because of COVID, but um, I was kind of happy that it started at this time because I was a little bit more ready for it because um, I was finishing editing a video at that time. So I went to NASCAD where Gary Neal Kennedy had been the president uh, in the past and I was there from 1997 to 2003. So thank you for um, to David McWilliam for asking me to do the residency and the director Lisa Baldassara for having having me here and Jazz and Nathaniel for all your help. Um, the exhibition of Gary Neal Kennedy reminded me of uh, reciprocity and um, exchange because a lot of the work that was exhibited was um, uh, postcards and different, um, like when artists came to NASCAD at that, in the seventies to do their prints and to do other work, they would, um, exchange different things and so also during COVID I I kind of couldn't really fathom like sitting in a studio and making artwork 
right when it hit, I was thinking more, the only thing I want to do is like make things for people and send them to them. So I thought, why not do that in this residency? And, you know, as things change, I'll, I'll talk, talk about the evolution of, of that. Um, so yeah, the end thing is to, to give, send some gifts to people. Um, anyways, I was a little nervous to um, do my residency way on this side of North Van because, <laughs> because of the drive, I avoid driving. I'm a, I'm a drive avoider, avoider. So I was really happy to hear that there's a good pathway, a bike path, um, like a good way to bike from where I live in East Van near Trout Lake to here and decided to have that as part of my residency. So um, it, yeah, it starts around Trout Lake and then I go through either past Emily Carr or uh, Chinatown. And if I go Chinatown, it goes through downtown and then I go along the seawall a tiny bit and then go through Stanley Park and over the Lionsgate Bridge. And then there's a, another pathway called the Spirit. I wrote it down, spirit something. Um, and then it's here, it's, it's, but it's a, it's a long ride. Like I don't have a great bike, but um, I really like it because um, I'm a mom and, oh, spirit trail, yeah, thank you. I'm a mom and it helps to break up my role as a, somebody who carries a lot of responsibility to having uh, more of a creative brain. <laughs> And also I like to think about the land I'm on. Um, as I noticed like that there is a res, a res like along, like after Lionsgate Bridge to here. And I wanted to learn a little bit about that. And I also, <clears throat> around Vancouver, there's all these little uh, book libraries outside. And I found a book about the history of Stanley Park. So <clears throat> that was really good because it's hard. I think a lot of people don't really connect to the ancestry of a place because you can't see it anywhere. So um, you have to kind of dig, dig around a bit. And so I'm just gonna read a little bit. Um, so like I was saying, as a human being, I find it important to understand and acknowledge the original place names and history of the land I'm on. <clears throat> so I thought I would share a little bit about what I learned. Um, so as I go through Stanley Park, it was a real uh, important place for a lot of the different um, groups. There was this, the Squamish, Musqueam, and Tsleil Tooth. They all lived there together. And it used to be pronounced, well, in English pronounced but I'm sure that's not the, um, the proper way to pronounce it. But I'm just gonna show you my, I'm gonna do a screen share now of the slides I have. Okay, play. Okay, so this is just a picture of downtown. It's always changing here. There's so much. Yeah, it's a hard, it's high, I find it hard. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this is Stanley Park. Sometimes when I bike, um, it's, I bike back at night and it's kind of beautiful. So yes, this is Stanley Park. This is the old, one of the old ways of uh, saying the name the top one and then the second one is how English would write it or say it. And then I cross over the Lionsgate Bridge. Oh yeah, I was gonna talk a little bit about Stanley Park, just a tiny bit, just because it's so interesting. Um, by late 1800s, it was the largest settlement um, of those three groups. And in the village, a big house or a long house measured up to um, 
60 meters to 20 meters wide. So 11 families would live in that house around um, 100 people. Um, and a large potlatch was held in that house in 1875. And there was some documentation in the city council minutes that uh, the medical health officer recommended the destruction of these buildings because of the uh, smallpox outbreak. And then in 1859, um, there was a, quite a lot of development. I mean, there's so much other history, but uh, there was a military reservation happening there and they basically um, kicked out all the indigenous families and then moved them to reserves. So sad. And then um, as I pass over the Lionsgate Bridge, you can see this is a picture from the Lionsgate Bridge and this is the um, reserve called Pumal Shitstun. I know I'm saying that wrong, but just wanted to like acknowledge that that's right by where the Griffin Art Projects is. <clears throat> and it's the uh, Squamish people are part of the Coast, Coast Salish language and culture group. And the name uh, it means, uh, a, well, a, translates loosely to fast moving water of fish relating to the Capilano River. <clears throat> so every time I go to the studio, I bike through these places and the Griffin Art Studio itself is a really amazing space. Like um, I just felt like I didn't really have to force the creativity. It just, I think this bike ride uh, gave me a lot of um, energy and cleared my head. And then the space itself is very huge and bright and clean. And so is really kind of magical to be here for almost two months. Um, and then my question for myself was, because I have all this space, what can I do that would require that kind of space? And um, I had done, um, I had a solo show in New Brunswick, uh, a place that we lived before here. Um, but the solo show was after we moved and it was three years ago and in the Owens Art Gallery. And um, I made these giant stencils um, of caribou um, that I projected video through. And I do work mostly in video. And during this residency, and actually the past couple of years, I've been craving more to work with my hands and to have more of embodied art, pra art practice. So um, when I, I had done all these laser cuts of caribou, I decided to like um, just take them all out and spread them all over this uh, studio space. And then I was going to do a video of um, do some video projections and some painting. And then I was like, well, why don't I use these uh, laser cuts on Mylar as um, like stencils. So, and I have a bunch of watercolor ink. So I decided to use, um, use them like this. So we, so, so this is the Owens art gallery and I'm just getting ready to use this uh, caribou, um, mylar thing and we're going to put it up it's actually huge like you can't really tell why well, maybe like compared to the laptop on the floor there uh it's very big and so we hung that up and then we projected my video through it along with some other videos and the ones that i have here at the griffin are like uh, the smaller versions of it and then um this is how it looked projected at the owens art gallery it's kind of hard to tell from, from the photo. Um, I kind of wanted it to look like uh, the dream state. Um, so this is the actual stencil. It's mylar, oh, it's kind of wet in the, you can see the, the drops of water because sometimes I clean off the stencils when I'm in between uses or I keep the actual ink. 
Um, so this is just the reason why it looks three, three dimensional is because I've been laying it on something that um, that's um, like cute. Uh, maybe I can just show you on this tube, which is like that giant stencil of the caribou. I didn't actually unroll it here, but I've been laying all of my that stuff is tough. It doesn't break. So it's fun. So it kind of looks sculptural. And before I came here, I was practicing my painting because I'm just learning. I've been play, painting off and on for a couple of years, but just little, little tiny paintings. And this is um, what caribou would be walking on and eating and it's Labrador tea. I don't know if they eat Labrador tea, mosses and lichens and stuff. It's just like a color study. Um, so this is the Griffin Art Studio and these are the Mylar stencils laid out on the floor. You can see how I just spread out everywhere. <laughs> So I have the negative and the positive. I kept, I'm a, one of those people that keeps everything. Cause I'm like, you never know. You never know when you're gonna need it for something. So, so this was um, <clears throat> one of my first watercolor uh, stencils. And I had some old paper from my printmaking days and the, they really seeped in perfectly. They didn't really bleed out to the sides. Like, so I was really happy with how they looked. And this is a giant caribou herd. I just love the way they um, travel together. I think we have a lot to learn from observing the nature around us that we're part of. Um, and I was listening to um, an audio book based on um, braiding sweetgrass. And it just talks about all the uh, ways we can look at nature and learn from it and be. And she talks about reciprocity, of all the good things that we sh all should be learning no matter what our backgrounds are. So this is the actual stencil and then the watercolor. So you can see the blue and that's um, the ink that's left. So yeah, I either use a paintbrush or I uh, use a sponge to dab through for different effects. It's just a solo caribou. I guess you're wondering maybe why I'm talking about caribou. Um, so I grew up, my parents, uh, so my dad comes from immigrant family and uh, my mom's from settler family and they decided to live in the Arctic. And um, <clears throat> so I grew up eating caribou and fish and um, going to community events, being part of the community and different families. <clears throat> and um, and then when we moved to Labrador, it was the same thing, but then we lived in Sheshashi. It was before it was um, a reserve. It became a reserve later on in the, like after we left in the nineties um, so that they could get funding for support, like running water, to have running water and different things, like basic things that people should have. So, um, Whenever, so after I graduated from NASCAD, um, I would always go back home because my parents still lived in Labrador. They didn't live in the reserve. They live about 45 minutes away, but um, I would always visit my friends and um, <clears throat> bought a video camera and started recording stuff and would give the DVDs to my friends and their families. Um, this is also just drawing. 
sketch different colors. So uh, I always go back and I do they because I have like some skills in video. Uh, they would ask me if I could do some interviews with elders and bring the youth to interview them or just work with youth on creative projects. And the youth just happen to always want to do interviews with their elders, which is really amazing because I didn't really see them visiting the elders very often, but they would always want, to, that's what they want. I'm like, do you want to make a horror movie? Do you want to do, you want to, uh, do a comedy? Like, what do you want to do? And they're like, interview elders, <laughs> always so. Um, <clears throat> And as I go back every year, um, well, I haven't this year, but um, usually every year I go back at least once or twice or three times. And the language is changing uh, dramatically. So the kids, most of them don't actually speak their language anymore, or they just might not have um, understanding of what the elders are saying because the elders are speaking the language of Nuchi meat, which is like being out on the land, like the words that would you would use there. And then they're using like slang community words. So it's like a totally different language almost. Um, so I did notice that. So I felt like all these recordings of these elders are pretty amazing. And I need to put them on YouTube because at least people have access to them. And they can, um, have that and hopefully translate them. Some of them are translated, but it's a lot of work to get that happening. Okay, this is at the school. This is um, Kenny. He's like the vice principal. Um, he always helps me to organize these uh, youth and elder workshops. So what we do is we set up a tent in the, in, in, outside of the community and ask an elder to come. We usually get them on skidoo and, um, and then they tell us stories and the kids listen. And then we pick, um, pick one of their stories and then we recreate, recreate it as a legend. And that takes like a week or two. So we did that twice. So anyways, these are more caribou. And so every time I would go back, people would give me, they would, I would stay at their homes and we would have caribou or fish and everything else. And um, it's, it's, something, it's something more than just eating together. It's like, you feel like the nourishment and you feel the love and you feel like the respect for these, what you're eating. Um, so when I first did this stencil, I was like, oh, that doesn't look good, but it kind of looks, it's like the dreams, uh, state because a lot of the caribou are not the herd has dwindled just like everywhere else and um, people aren't really allowed to hunt anymore so it's sad and so I'm using the negative and the positive and then this black ink here is like just what I would use to do the outline it's so weird like not seeing anyone's face <laughs> Like, are you still there? <laughs> um, so this is two caribou in water, just their heads above the water or their antlers. Just so basically I use this um, time at the Griffin to really just um, explore different ways of using these uh, stencils and I was never hard on myself. It was really nice. Like I just, um, it wasn't about like the final product. It's just about the process. And it was a really nice time for me because it's not like I have to show these works or um, there's no final outcome for this stuff. So it was like, okay, this is a play. This is time for play. And, um, Man, was it ever nice to have this time. I'm not sure. Let's 
so yeah, these are just more of my trying to make, trying to paint what I see. <clears throat> so yeah, this is very low to the ground. Okay, I just wanted to show you the process a little bit. So this would be like the first layer. I, I was like, I decided to build layers upon layers as my experimenting. So this is like a first layer. And then this is actually multiple layers. Sorry, I didn't take pictures of every single step, but um, see those like bottom ones, they look like they could be carib they could be lichens and mosses, but they're actually just herds of caribou together. Okay, I'll show you the stencil. <laughs> that's the positive or negative I don't know whatever I didn't use this one for that but that's like the end the cut out of the stencil <sighs> so yeah I one of the elders that I really loved interviewing, even though I didn't understand what he was saying, um, but his name is Pian Panashwe, and um, he was so neat. Like he talked about how he would have a dream about where the caribou were. And then he would wake up in the morning and say, let's go to that place. Like, And they know the place name to every single like he knew everything about where everything, everything in Labrador was like, he, he just knew all, like there's so many specific names for little bits of area. So he would say to his um, sons and brothers and stuff, let's go hunting over there. And they would go and that's exactly where they would be exactly where he saw them in his dream. So I was thinking about him when I was making these. I feel like I should be talking to maybe um I wonder if I could show these and you could ask questions at the same time <laughs> yeah we could do that Navarena and we could perhaps just open it up for if if uh, anyone has questions um to even type it in the Q&A that they'd like to be unmuted and we can kind of interweave them as they come up I think that's a great idea This one was a little bit different. I uh, did a painting first. Where is it? Um, and then we put it through a laser printer and then it cut out. Oh, hi, Landon. <laughs> Hello, can you hi. hear me? Hi, Carol. Hi. Hey. <laughs> These are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I love your story uh, that you told about this man who knew every corner of the land and that intimate relationship to the land. And there's something very um, spatial and material and like kind of dreamlike about these stencils and how they overlap and um seems sort of like a dream of the land or a memory or a, i don't know they seem related to that 
comment mm -hmm. in a beautiful way. Yeah, and like growing up, um, my dad would, okay, my dad was actually a vegetarian before we moved up to the Arctic. And <laughs> so he right away decided uh, if I'm going to feed my family, I need to learn how to hunt. So he humbly asked the hunters if he could join them. And like, you know, you know, you always give something like gas and different things to for the hunt. And and then also sometimes he would bring like we would go as a family and it was pretty special to be out, out there doing that. And also just do, like doing day trips with my mom, we'd go and pick berries and uh, mushrooms together. So they, they feel like dreams, like um, they feel like I would love to go back up there and just lay down on the mosses and and in Baker Lake, where we left when I was 12. And also just visit people, It'd be really nice. And also I want to, thinking about gifts again, like my mom did a lot of photography and she took tons of pictures of people and I'd like to get those printed and bring them to their families. Is that it? Yeah. Just keep it on. Oh, I can just show you um, what it looks like in here. Stop share. I think. It's almost like you need a mouse to do the stop share. Doesn't want to go there. Pause share and we're going to stop there. Okay, that worked. Did it work? Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, is that me now? I, all I see is the caribou. Okay, there we go. Okay, hi. <laughs> so yeah, this is the space. And these are all, <laughs> this is how I work. <laughs> Spread out everywhere. Oh, they're beautiful. I, um, was kind of nervous to share them on um, social media, but I did. And all my, it's basically all of Labrador that's on Facebook. Yeah, and they're on there all the time. And they're, it was nice because um, a lot of people said, I want one. So that's like, okay, good. People are connecting with these and now I can send them. And then I realized like, because the process has been so nice. Like I didn't really realize how long it took to make these things. So um, as I was trying to duplicate them a little bit, I was like, Ooh, this is taking a long time. So I might just try to make um, reproductions of some of them to send. You can make G clays on nice paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did we do that really fast? Yeah, we did. All right. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> oh, there's a chat. Yeah, no, I'm going to hop on here just for a second. Um, Navrana, just to thank you. That was really wonderful um, to learn more about the background of your process and really um, kind of how you've really taken the time to learn about the background of the location, like where Griffin is situated and how that kind of ties into your ideas and thoughts and then um, the process just yeah really inspiring to to get that glimpse into your studio so thank you so much for your time today and for opening your space um, for our audience members we really appreciate it um, yeah and we'll open it up to questions um, I know that um, Landon McKenzie possibly has a question for us or for you, I should say. And I'll just, I'll hide my, I'll hide my camera, but if anyone else has a question and would like to be unmuted, go ahead and type it in the Q&A. Or if you prefer just to type your questions, I can also read them out loud. So totally um, up to you. 
So shall I ask a question? Am I unmuted? <laughs> Muted? Yes. Uh, Navi, it's so great to see this. I'm, I really enjoyed the whole thing. And um, I, I guess I was really thinking about your own kind of journey, like as you as migratory person or being and the caribou being a sort of stand in for a human um, community, uh, interdependent with a human community, but also at, within the history of art, often the animal having this kind of other role a theatrical role and then I loved your description of sort of migrating daily from your role as a parent and a partner and those kinds of responsibilities and physically using the the studio as like really stretching out this this space I thought that was really beautiful and then also thinking about how normally annually you're migrating from like the most opposite points in the country from Vancouver to back to Labrador and and all the places in between and then I know that your migration to live here for several years will soon come to an end and you'll migrate to Quebec and that will be another migration so I wanted if you could just talk a little bit more about I mean first of all using the residency to just blow things open I think it's just a beautiful example of why residencies are so important um, and I really appreciate the Griffin, you know, having those kinds of things uh, for you and others. And but can you just talk a little bit about you as a migrating creature? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, that's that really resonates actually. Um, yeah, because also like I find it really hard when I move to a new place, like to find my people, you know, like my people that I connect with. Um, as I get older, um, but it always does happen eventually. And then you bring your idea of what safety like safe, being safe and being home and, and community looks like. And, um, you know, my kids also like, they are adapting to us moving so much and they're pretty good at um, the migration too, I think. Like they can talk to people and get to know people pretty quickly. Um, um, you know, it's really neat that you came on the Zoom call because I was, I've been thinking about your piece that you did about the Labrador caribou and when they opened up that hydro development in that destroyed like thousands and thousands of them because they they opened it up right when they were when they were crossing and it flooded the land and it flooded like everything like there was grave sites and everything but the you know the Newfoundland government didn't consider Inu people people they didn't they didn't look at them they said there's no one living here you know there's no one living here well what about the Inu people, what about the caribou? And those groups are so interlinked, they're almost one and the same. Like um, like when an Inu person talks about um, caribou they, or other creatures, they say, my brother. Like, I think that's the same as all First Nations, but um, there's not really like a huge separation. And I think when I migrate to different places too, I like, want to be in nature because that's how I connect. Um, I think actually all humans connect to, can connect to themselves through, through nature. It's just sometimes there's, because our, all the concrete and the way we live, we don't really realize that, that we actually get a lot out of it. I mean, I feel the Vancouver people are very much, um, into being outside all the time. So that's cool. But there's still like a lot of, I find it, I do find it hard here because there's so much wealth and um, paving over of things. I find it wild. That part's weird. I've always found that really hard to, like I was like, maybe I should do some Vancouver work. And then all I would wanna do is like stuff about the housing crisis. And then I'd be like too sad to continue. <laughs> Uh, when but, you move to Montreal, you'll probably do the Vancouver work. It'll be in the memory. Huh. You'll be doing work about Trout Lake or small children or 
riding bicycles or I don't know. Like, yeah. You give yourself permission. Totally. You're doing work about rain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew I was, I, I would never get to Vancouver and I knew I was doomed to stay here when I started to notice how beautiful the rain was and how much I loved the rain. Mm. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> but I still think about like the trees and the land where I grew up, like it haunts me. Like I think the landscape that is your childhood landscape is such a deep bond. And it sort of sets the rules for what the land is, and, you know, like, and you're so intimate with the land when you're a small child, like the way you know, children explore every piece of that. I mean, the, the, those photographs of the of the plants on the ground are so gorgeous. Where a child could just get lost forever in getting to know that land. Yeah, I remember um, when we moved to Labrador. Um, you know, the Arctic is different from where I was in Labrador, Central Labrador, and then later on as a 19 year old went to the Yukon and went hiking there and got to see the cotton, the Arctic cotton and also like some of these lichens and mosses. Um, and I like serious, I just started bawling my head off because it was like, um, yeah, what I saw when I was a kid, like and when you're a kid, you're so small and you're so close to the land. Mm -hmm. so it was pretty special and then also you know my grandparents are from as I mentioned Ontario and uh the prairies it was so wild to like go back and forth to these places but those um like the air in um Belleville Ontario like and the thunderstorms like I love that mm -hmm. too and then the prairie landscape oh my god yeah special places that's so wonderful, uh, Navarana. I was so struck by um, the materials, like the even just seeing the process and the mylar. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, maybe some next steps. I know you've projected uh, video footage onto pieces in the past, and I wondered um, if that's a direction you're moving in with these projects, um, or if you have kind of a next, uh, any plans for your next phases of this project yeah I'd, I'd like to um I, I would I did talk to a gallery about having a solo show next not this summer but the summer after but we didn't sign anything so I'm not gonna talk about which gallery but um I was thinking you know it'd be fun to have these as sculptural somehow but I haven't spent too much time thinking about it, but I think there could be something from it. Um, because when light does fall on it, it's pretty neat. You got the shadows and and they don't even have any like at this point, you're like, what does that have that there's no caribou in that. It's just like water. And so that could be something to explore. Um, yeah, they're beautiful. And you mentioned a few times kind of the mylar being evocative of like a dream or memory like state which is yeah really beautiful um, and then I'm just gonna keep doing these like uh, watercolor stencils because I feel like I just uh, start like um, I have this thing of like layer over layering I think so I just want to like see if I can find some kind of like in between <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard. I find like I, I kind of stay in the present. Like, I'm not really sure future wise what I, I would really like to go back to Labrador and because I will be in Quebec, it will be a lot easier. Um, and I'm not sure if I do more video work, I would like to work with more people. So it's not just me editing for months. Um, so those are some of my goals. <laughs> oh, I'm going to mute myself. Amazing. Yeah, thanks so much, Navarana. Um, and you mentioned at, at the start of your talk as well, um, which I'm so glad you did, was that your residency was initially planned in conjunction with Now Bulletin, which was um, uh, 
an exhibition featuring the personal collection of Gary Neal Kennedy that Griffin hosted um, from September to December 2020. Um, and I just, yeah, so lovely how so many of these themes like exchange and reciprocity and the sending of the artworks kind of tie in so beautifully with that. So yeah, we were just so thrilled that you're able to, um, even if it was late, you're still able to participate in the in this residency um, because it just added so much to our programming. So thank you so much. Thank um, you, Jess. Yeah. And, and if anyone's interested in learning more about that exhibition, I'll just post in the chat here. Um, we Griffin ha recently launched a new website at the beginning of the year and um, we're, we have really great documentation of our past exhibitions now as well as our past um, digital archives. So be sure to check out that link. There's actually even a, a, a 3D model of the exhibition space where you can really get a sense of how it was laid out. Um, but yeah, I just, thanks again, Navarana, um, for your time today and for letting us get uh, a peek into your workspace and your process. And so wonderful to see the space being used in such an exciting, explorative way. It's just, yeah, really inspiring. So thank you so much. Yeah, it was so inspiring. Thank you. And thank you for everyone who joined us today. Um, and we'll enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Bye, thank you. Bye, thanks everyone. Mm -hmm.